So in this case, I want us to consider uh, this example. Uh, if you are to take note, we are asked here to solve by calculation for the given network in Fig 1.6, the magnitude of current 1 plus current 2 through the resistor R3, which is this I1 plus I2. That is the fig that you're given. All right. Before we look into the calculations, the diagram on its own, guys, it is something else. If we are to consider here, this represents that it's a positive, as we do understand, and this is a negative. This is a positive. This is a negative. In a normal simplification that we are used to, we are supposed to have our currents flowing this way. We are supposed to have the indication of the current going this direction, this other current going this other direction, entering this side. But there, we are given another situation on its own where these are taken from the negative now. They're taken from the negative. How so? So the question is, whenever you're given this part, use your circuit diagram as it is. You're supposed to be having in this other direction of the positive and entering this, giving us I1 and I2. So this year, guys, I had to present, I think this is supposed to be from hands on uh, textbook. So that is why I'd also bring the reason also they are giving us that one assumption that we can assume from the onset is that current will flow from the negative terminal of the voltage source towards the positive terminal of that voltage source. There may be arguments that this is not a valid assumption since some theories may indicate that current flow from the positive terminal of the voltage source toward the negative, which is what we are used to. And this is exactly what we are used to. So they are simply saying, if it is like this, guys, you are simply going to use as it is so. For those who are using uh, the textbook of uh, hands-on, uh, in your revisions, uh, you are going to notice your diagrams not in the normal way, the way that you are used to. Then you'll be wondering how. So this is it, guys. I'm going to present another example of this nature uh, from the TVET series uh, textbook so that we see how they present their diagrams versus uh, this one of the hands-on. All right, so this is what we have, guys. We are given our circuit, and according to the currents, we have to work with how the currents are now presented. That is the situation that we have from the positive going that uh, uh, from the negative, I mean, in that direction. So we're going to consider our first loop. This one, I'm going to take this as my first loop. All right, according, guys, we have to take it from the, from the negative. Okay? From the negative there, as it is. Again, also in that direction. This is what they want you to obtain it uh, if you are using this source, uh, which is the hands-on. All right, so let's consider the first loop. Okay, this is one and this is two. So the first loop, which is our loop one, moving from the negative, like they say that it's not going to have any effect. So our loop one, we are going to take it this direction. So I'm just going to take from A to B to E to F. That's A, B, E, F. That's our first loop. So according to this, we have got the voltage source. So we're going to consider the sum of the voltage being equal to the sum of the uh, voltage drop that we have. So in this case, 10, you take it as it is, guys, because from the negative, the current, the way that is flowing, you take as it is. 10 as it is. So 10 is equal to... Now you move on considering the currents now. The direction is supposed to be in this way of current one that we are seeing. We are supposed to be maintaining the current of one. So current one times the 10 ohms. So you're going to have 10 I1. We move on from B to E, from B to E. As we can see, we are moving in the same direction. So it's going to be a positive uh, 20 times the current there, which is I1 plus I2. So the current I1 plus I2. We move on from E to F. There is nothing there to be considered. Uh, so we do not have anything. So that is 10 is equal to, let's simplify guys, uh, 10 I1 plus 20 times I1. So this will be 20 
I1 plus 20 I2. So you can collect uh, the like terms considering uh, the currents in that case, current one and uh, current one. We have got the part of current one here. We also have the part of current one being added together. So thus we can add 10 is equal to 10 plus 20. Uh, that was going to give us 30 I1 plus 20 I2. So we've got our first equation, guys, which you can just write as uh, 30 I1 plus 20 I2 is equal to 10. We move on to the other hand. We do the same thing. So do not, guys, do not be worried. That's what they are saying we can do that. So loop two, we consider just going to move from C to B as from the negative side. C, B, uh, E, D like that. So you have to consider the presentation of your diagram, how it is presented, because in another part, you're going to have something opposite, totally opposite to this. We are going to see that, uh, like I said, from the TV series textbook, so that we just uh, conclude. So this total is going to be total of the voltage drops. So let's consider there's only one source there, which is 20. Going this side in the negative, so you're just going to take it as positive 20. So 20 is equal to this I2 affecting R2 is in this. That is the direction that we, we are moving, actually. So it's just a positive there. So that's 15 uh, times I2. Then we move on. Let's move on from B to E. Take note from B to E. As we are moving from B to E, we are moving in the same direction as the current is presented. So this time it's a positive, not a negative. It's going to be positive. So that's positive. 20 times the current. So that's 20 into the current I1 plus I2. That is where the difference is going to be. This one is flowing in the same. The other part that we had, uh, actually, okay, this other one, it was also in the same direction, all right? Uh, so there's no change there, guys. Unless if it was like this, it was going to oppose. Uh, we are going to see that uh, in another class. So let's expand our brackets 20 times I1. That's 20I1, 20 times I2, that's 20I2. So in this case, we are going to have the like terms. There's only current one here. Uh, then we add I2. As we can see that there is part of I2 here. There's also I2 here. So these are like terms. You have to add 15 plus 20, which is 35. So that's 35I2 there. All right, so let's take our equation, guys. This is 20I1, I1. This is 20 I1, and this one is uh, the part of I2. So that means we're going to have uh, 20 I1 plus uh, 35 I2, which is equal to a 20. That's our uh, second equation. So you need now to solve these. So as you can see, guys, the solving part thereafter, uh, we are used to that. But are we seeing the, the diagram, the presentation there? You are supposed work that as they actually stated that they may be argue, actually the arguments uh, they're there that this is not a valid assumption since the theory that the boys we are used to the positive terminal part from flowing from the positive so in that case um i don't know which part but now if it is given in an exam like that there's no way boys you have to follow the way the currents are, pre are presented you follow the way the currents are presented. You do not want to have any confusion in your exams because at the end of the day, you'll be in exam and maybe they, they took uh, their questions from this uh, part of what, of this textbook of hands on. Maybe that's where they took their questions and they will just check the way that they were calculating. They, they will just take the way they were calculating. Them. So now you see, you know, no longer have an option when it's like that. All right. So let's solve our equations. We're going to take equation 1, 30. I1 plus 20 I2 is equal to 10. Uh, the other one, uh, 20 I1 plus 35 I2 is equal to 20. I think in the, in the future cases of our revision, they are supposed to just give us a circuit. Then you are the one who is to give, uh, like these directions, you are the one who is to, Make your own direction in terms of the currents. I think that can be better in the future. Uh, and also have a lot of methods presented in the memo so that people can use different ways 
different, there can be different ways. All right, anyways, guys, let's solve. Uh, like I said, you can eliminate N of the currency. In this case, I'm just gonna focus with I1. I'm gonna eliminate I1. As we can see, we're supposed to have multiplied uh, by 30 and by 20, by 20 year on top and by 30 year. But like I said before, you can reduce this by 10. So it's gonna be three and two. Instead of you using 20 and 10, you are simply going to multiply by three, uh, by two on top, by three below. All right, so let's multiply the first equation by two. Two times 30, uh, that is gonna give us 60. So we've got 60 I1, two times 20, which is 40. So that's 40 I2 is equal to two times 10, which is 20 times three. 60 I1 times three, which is 105. So that's 105 I2 is equal to three times 20, which is 60. So the question is, how are we going to eliminate I1 at this stage? Are we going to add or are we going to subtract? So that's 60 and 60, we're going to subtract 60 minus 60. That's a zero. So whatever that you have used to eliminate I1 must be used throughout. So this is what I'm trying to say. It's going to be 40 minus 105. So what are you going to have? You subtract 40 minus 105. That's minus 65i2 is equal to 20 minus 60, which is uh, negative 40. And we can divide by negative 65 by negative 65 both sides, thus determining uh, the value of i1. So I, uh, the value of i2, I mean, so i2 uh, in this case was going to give us uh, a positive uh, 0, 0,615. Uh, That's 0, 0,615. Uh, amps. So we have obtained I2, okay? We have obtained I2 in this case. We can substitute this value in any of these equations to find uh, I1. So the later part of solving, guys, we are used to this one. Uh, my major question today was on the second. This solving part, we are used to this. So you can just substitute in any equation. So in this case, I'm going to use uh, equation one. From equation one, we are given 30 I1 plus... 20 I2, and we have got I2 in this case, which is 0, 0,615. It must give us what? A 10. So we can solve. So that's 30 I1 plus 20 times this uh, 0, 0,615. That's 12,3, which is equal to 10. Then take this to the side. It's going to be a negative 12,3. Uh, that means 30 I1 is equal to negative 2,3. So we can divide by 30, guys, both sides. Uh, to have the value of what? To have the value of I1. And that is going to be a negative value, negative 0, 0,077 amps. So we have got the value of what? The value of I1. With a negative. So the negative simply tells us that the movements that or the directions, the way that we chose on the loop are in opposite of what was supposed to be taken. So do not even worry with this. You just take your current with the negative as it is. Then we can determine this part that we are being asked, which is to determine I1 plus I2. This one, I1 plus I2. Because we have got current one and we have got current two. Therefore, uh, current one plus current two was going to be what? Current one minus 0, 0,077 plus I2, which is... Uh, 0, 0,615. So adding these two was going to give us uh, the resultant of I1 and I2, which is 0, 0,5, uh, 38 amps. So we have got the value of I1 plus I2. Like I said before, they can even ask you to calculate the voltage drop across this part where we are giving I1 plus I2. They can ask you to calculate the power there. You just need to go back to your normal calculations. Voltage is current times resistance. Power can be calculated from V squared over R. Can be calculated from I squared times R. Can be calculated from voltage times current. Any formula there, depending with the value that you are using, which current is at the branch that you are being asked to calculate uh, any of those questions. So these are your typical questions, guys. With your textbooks, let's revise as much as we can. Like I said, we're going to have another example of the similar question 
from another textbook and the way they want us to answer this question.